Right. Uh, <coughs> so, in this session, just continuing on with the, some more definitions in the context of set theory. So, uh, <coughs> the idea, the idea of the complement. Now, note the e. It's not. It's not an i. Uh, if you're not a, a native English speaker. Um, the word complement yeah, that probably sounds to you like uh, somebody said something nice uh, about you, but that that's with an I. Uh, complete complement. This is complement. Uh, what does that mean? <clears throat> uh, something extra outside you that helps complete you. Um, like a, a, a good couple, one might be good at business and the other one's. Uh, good at engineering, that kind of thing. So they complement each other, like together they make a good whole, W-H-O-L-E. Now, uh, in the context of set theory, uh, the, the complement of a set, A, right, uh, usually you need to specify uh, that that set A is a complement relative, because it's a relative term, to some other set, um, B. Now, uh, I've drawn here a Venn diagram, but um, <laughs> we haven't done that. That'll be like the next thing, so I, I will come back to this. But I can, <laughs> it's a bit of a catch-22, which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Uh, I'm just wondering, if, well, I'll give you the sort of verbal, uh, symbolic description of, of what a complement is first, and then I'll explain what Venn diagrams are. And then it's much easier to explain what a complement is of a set in terms of a Venn diagram, but I, I can't do it yet. So, uh, in a sense, the, the complement of a set is uh, relative to some other set. Is the, the, it's the set of members that do not belong to A, uh, but do belong to the bigger set B, in, in a sense. Um, so, they're the members of the elements outside A. And uh, so the complement usually the complement of the set A is usually written as um, you know, capital A with a bar over the top. Right? So that, that means it's the complement, not complement with an I. Okay? So uh, <coughs> in um, set notation and in terms of uh, properties, it'd be so um, so A bar, you know, the complement of A. By definition, it's a set of x such that x belongs to B, that's your biggest set, the, the set that you're taking A relative to. So x belongs to B and, so two properties here, x does not belong to A. So it's those, it's those members of B that uh, do not belong to A. And that set, that set here, is defined. Oh, by the way, three bars. If you see three bars like this, uh, that that's the symbol for is defined by right so this symbol here on the left hand side is is defined by this on the right hand side so this this is in a sense the definition symbol okay three bars <laughs> definition okay uh, what's the Venn diagram it's a sort of easy intuitively easy way to uh, represent a set. Uh, so the, the, the set you just represent as an oval, right? like, like a, an ellipse shape, like, a, like an egg shape, a squash circle shape, like, 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 like that, an oval shape. That, that represents your set. Okay? So this, this set here, uh, uh, let's say we've, we've been talking about this set before, just three elements, three members, uh, three integers, 7, 21, 57. So we could represent that set as a Venn diagram, Venn, V-E-N-N, -N. Uh, Venn, mathematician of some, I don't know which nationality. Um, my history of mathematics is a little bit weak, so I'd, I'd need to uh, wiki, wiki that, you know, go to Wikipedia and look it up. Uh, who, who was Venn, you know, which nationality, when, see it was a he. And nearly all mathematicians are he's. Uh, when did he live? Mm -hmm. All right. So a Venn diagram is uh, you represent the set just by an oval you know, line, 
and the members of the set you represent as dots, you just points inside inside the oval. So you can represent this set as an oval and three dots, and each dot is one of these three elements. So that dot would represent the seven, that dot, 21, and so on. Okay, so a Venn diagram, oval and dots. Okay, simple. I mean, yeah, um, primary school kid can understand Venn diagrams, very easy. Okay, now, uh, how do you, how do you uh, represent uh, an element that belongs, like an element in the intersection of two sets, A and B? So, so, so this element X here, this dot here, it belongs to two sets, A and B. So it, it would belong, that X would belong to the uh, intersection of sets A and B. Well, you can represent this way. You just have two Venn diagrams that overlap. Okay? And you put your dot uh, here, in the, in the sort of middle, in the overlapping part of these two sets, A, A and B. Okay? And now uh, the, the union of two sets A and B, you, you represent by dashes, you know, strokes like this. So, so that, that would mean all the dots in, this, in like these three areas, this area, the middle area, and this area, all those dots belong to the, uh, the union of A and B. Right? So you, you represent the union of two sets by, by uh, striping in, if you like, uh, the whole the whole area like this the whole figure of eight so to speak now the intersection would be just this middle part only right? because any any dot that's in a but not here uh, does not belong to B okay and therefore does not belong to the intersection of a and B okay so uh, in Venn diagram terms the union is uh, represented this way and the intersection is represented that way. So these, these dashes here, these uh, lines, uh, they, they represent the points, you know, the dots, the periods, if you like, uh, in this area here, this middle, middle area. In other words, the, they represent the points, the, the members, in other words, that belong to A and B, right? the intersection. All right, now move back a bit. Um, I'm doing an experiment. Oh, I, I did. I, I've been experimenting like. Oh, I can't. Damn. Uh, I'm going to do this. I've got a problem. I'm going to anticipate this. Hold on. I'm going to have to. I'm, I'm, I have a kitchen table. Well, not kitchen, dining room table. So, uh, mm, I hadn't anticipated this. Like, this is the first time. I've moved the position of the table. So it's sort of now that way. But I need to, I need to be positioned here so that I can talk about this, not block, block the board. Uh, mm. Have to find a better solution in future. So, all right. So I move. Okay, this will this will work. All right. Okay. So new new topic. Right. Um, <clears throat> we're doing, and for quite a few sessions in the future, uh, we we're just learning tools, you know, mathematical tools, that we will use. For future, future lectures, future, future sessions, um, the, for the three big parts of the text on uh, automata, you know, you know, what, you know, devices that com that compute, uh, you know, or an automaton, like a machine that computes, a uh, uh, computability. You know, what what is what can you compute and what is impossible to compute? You know, the theory about that, and the third one, uh, what was that? Complexity theory, uh, trying to distinguish between those problems that you can compute uh, that are difficult, or hard as it's 
used, that's the technical word used, hard and uh, easy, right? that uh, take much less time, much less effort on the part of the computer, the, the device that's doing the computing, uh, the automaton, if you like. Right? So, uh, you know, quite, a, quite a bit of math uh, to come. Now, uh, so this, this uh, square, if you like, uh, is called uh, sequences and tuples. Uh, close, closely related. Uh, what, what is a sequence? Uh, well, just from the very word, the meaning of the word, in, in ordinary English, um, uh, the order is important. You know, one, thing, one thing after the other. You, you, you have to do it in sequence. You know, this one and then that one. and you know, The order, time order, the position order matters. Okay. So a sequence, uh, you know, sequence of objects. It's just, it's just, just a, li a list of them, but in some order. The order is important. Okay. Like, uh, uh, you know, uh, say for me, uh, the, the sequence of uh, the natural numbers starting at one. Well, you, you'd say one, two, three, four, you know, dot, dot, dot. You, you would not. Uh, you would not say one, four, two, three, right? Because it's, it's it's out of sequence. Right? It's not not in pro proper order. So uh, you know, just the the ordinary meaning of the word sequence and this technical meaning in mathematics, set through well, mathematics, pretty much the same. They they agree. Okay. So you know, it's just it's just a list a list of objects, but in some order, right? and often uh, written within parentheses, like like these round brackets, not not wiggly brackets. Okay? So uh, that that's a sequence of numbers where where the order is important. And uh, okay, so now in a set, remember from what we just said earlier session, uh, the order of the members elements in the set doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. But in sequence, it does matter. Okay, so uh, remember that. Okay.